Welcome to topic 5.1. We're going to look at the wave nature of light. For this particular session, you will need a calculator, holy grail sheet, the electromagnetic spectrum handout, and lastly, a red and purple colored pencil, pen, marker, if you have those available to you. So we are going to move on from unit four, and the unit that we're going to study is going to look at the structure with electrons. And so to understand this, we have to talk about light and energy to understand electrons and their behavior with the electron cloud model. So light is a form of energy called electromagnetic radiation. You know of a second version or our second form, I should really say, of electromagnetic radiation, which is gamma rays from nuclear decay. So both light and gamma rays are a form of energy that is wave-like, means that they can travel um, through space as where sound needs a medium, electromagnetic energy does not. All types of electromagnetic radiation travel through space as a wave containing electric and magnetic fields. That part of it we don't dive into. If you move on to take physics, that's one of the things you'll specialize in. So in order to talk about waves, we have to understand their structure. And so we have a little bit of an anatomy lesson, so to speak, to give. When we talk about the structure of a wave, you can think of it no different than the structure of a water wave. So the first thing we can measure on a wave is what's called wavelength. We use the Greek letter lambda. So to draw that, I draw it as a hook and a line coming off, and it kind of actually looks like a wave. And so the name gives it away. You're measuring a distance, and it's the distance from one point to the exact same point on a second part of the wave. And so that is measured in units like meters, centimeters, or nanometers, but any distance unit can be used here. The next one is the frequency, which is used a Greek letter nu, which a lot looks basically like a V. And this is the number of peaks that pass a point in space um, in one second. So basically, if you can envision yourself counting waves passing by like a buoy at a beach, um, you can count how many waves are going by. And that's measuring its frequency. The more waves go by, the higher the frequency. And so we are going to use a new unit here called Hertz, abbreviated HZ. And there's two other ways to show it. Um, and I'll explain that more once we get into the actual equation. The next piece of the wave that we can measure is what's called amplitude, which is the height. And it's the height from what's called the origin to the crest or to the trough. And we'll label those here in a moment as well. The last thing here is that we have C, which is the speed of light, which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And that this is all energy types. So this can be light, visible light. Um, it can be those gamma rays all the way to microwaves or ultraviolet, for example, they are able to travel with that three times 10 to the eighth meters per second in a vacuum. So here's that wave um, labeling that I talked about. So with that being said, we talked about um, the wavelength. And so that's this line here, this whole point from the distance from here to here is wavelength from the same point on one wave to the same point on another. And while we're talking about that, that highest point that's labeled there, that is the crest. So this highest peak of the wave is the crest, as where the lowest point of the wave is the trough. So again, we have a second wavelength being shown in this particular um, setup in that this is the distance from here to here. And for some reason, Microsoft got rid of my writing. So let me put that back in. So here to here, and again, crest was the highest point trough being the lowest point. And then the last thing then is the amplitude. That is from this origin, this line that runs across to the highest point on the wave. You can also do amplitude from here to here if you wanted. So it's measuring just the height of the wave. So this is where you want to have that red or purple colored pencil. And go ahead and draw these in on your um, sheet. Now you don't have to have all the waves, but the one thing that you want to do is when you grab your red colored pencil or writing utensil is that you want to show that it has a greater distance between the crest than the, the purple color, which is representing different colors of light. So if you are able to zoom in and if you could actually see the electron moving through space and the color that it's um, releasing, we would see this type of wave. And so it has a longer wavelength, which is a lower frequency, meaning if you were able to count, we have one, 
two, three, four complete waves here. So then go ahead and draw that in your red. Once you're ready for your purple, you want to draw it so it has a shorter wavelength, a shorter distance between consecutive peaks or crests and troughs. And so that gives us a higher frequency. So that's part of the relationship here is that we get our different colors of light from different frequencies in which it's traveling. We can see there's way more waves packed into that area. And if you need to pause this video to finish coloring those in, please do that. So the next thing we're going to do is compare two waves in terms of their structure and kind of, again, look at that relationship. So we have wave X up here at the top and wave Y is the bottom. Um, and we can see here we have zero to one meter to give us a distance reference. So in A, it asks which wave has a longer wavelength. So we're looking at which one does it have a longer wavelength or distance between consecutive points. Well, we can see here that wave X, it's one full meter versus here you have two whole complete waves going past that or two wavelengths. So X is definitely the longer of the two. So which wave has a higher frequency? So that means number of waves. So if you take a look, wave y definitely has more waves passing through it than x so y has the higher frequency so on the flip side then we have which wave has a shorter wavelength so that is y it has a shorter distance between consecutive peaks so lower frequency means fewer waves passing which is x so you can see here what happened with wavelength x had the longer wavelength but it had the lower frequency so we can say wavelength increases, then frequency decreases. On the opposite side of that then is if wavelength decreases, if it gets shorter, your frequency increases. And that's the Greek letter lambda nu for wavelength and frequency. So this is an inverse relationship that if one goes up, the other goes down. So the electromagnetic spectrum, this is a handout. Um, it's different than yours, but it's got the general idea that these are all the different waves that make up the full spectrum. So when we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, there's a couple parts to it. We have wavelength. So that's on this particular handout here at the top. We're going from long to short on this one and from a uh, low frequency to a high frequency. So all of these waves travel at that constant, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and we're gonna just talk about uh, some of the properties of them. So starting at the longest wavelength, we have radio waves. So right now, these are traveling all around you. They're passing through your body right now. Um, they pass through your walls, everything like that. That's all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so when you tune into a specific radio station, you're turning in, tuning into a very specific wavelength and frequency. And so when you turn the dial, those are frequencies that you're adjusting your radio to. And so you have different waves for AM versus FM, um, if you've ever had the pleasure of listening to AM radio. And then another part of the spectrum where we have shorter wavelengths are microwaves. So as we make our way through this, the wavelength is going to get shorter Therefore, the frequency is going to get higher. And so different places that you see microwaves is Wi-Fi relies on this frequency. Um, obviously, when you nuke something in the microwave, you're using that frequency of energy um, and radar um, also relies on microwaves. The next component of the electromagnetic spectrum is infrared. So you've probably seen maybe images like this with night vision showing where we have heat, um, where things are the hottest versus not. And so this is where you're relying on a shorter wavelength yet um, than microwaves. And so um, other places that use infrared would be like your remote. So when you change the station on your television um, and then even heat lamps, if you work in a restaurant, they rely on heat lamps or like if you're raising baby chicks, you're using those light bulbs that glow red to produce heat. Visible light, that's very important to us. So this is a very narrow range of the spectrum. And within that visible light range, we have all the colors. We have Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv is just um, an acronym standing for red, orange, yellow, 
green, blue, indigo, violet. So the range of colors that make up the visible spectrum. So we obviously use that for vision, photography, um, different ways like that. And so within that, we have different wavelengths that get us our different colors of light. Shortening up our electromagnetic spectrum even more, um, we get to UV lights or um, ultraviolet radiation. Um, this is where we're now getting into shorter wavelengths and higher frequency, which becomes more dangerous. So when you tan or you get a sunburn, it's because of exposure to UVA um, or UVB rays that, again, can cause damage to your skin. If you've had some dental work done, they can use UV lights to help cure the different um, materials that they use in um, dental fixtures. X-rays get to be higher energy yet, and that allows us to see things like bones. It's able to pass through soft tissues, so it doesn't pass through the dense bones, but you're, it's able to pass through your flesh, and so you're able to make out those different um, parts and pieces. And so when you go to the dentist, they put that heavy apron typically on you. That's a lead-filled apron to minimize your body's exposure to x-rays and you want to just emphasize on just the area needing to um, be vis visual like your teeth at the dentist and then baggage screening at an airport also uses x-ray. Gamma rays um, are a small wavelength and these have the most energy of all the spectrum. So um, Different scans can use that when you are wanting to look at soft tissues. So um, some imaging uses that and then cosmic rays can also release gamma rays. And then we know that gamma rays can also come from nuclear decay of the atom. So like we just emphasized, the lower the energy will have longer wavelengths. So therefore a lower frequency. So we know that long waves have low frequency, meaning less waves pass by because of that long wavelength. And so that gives you lower energy. That's why, you know, things like radio waves can pass through you right now and not cause any issues. However, as we get into um, higher energy, that means you have a shorter frequency, or excuse me, a shorter wavelength, higher frequency, things like gamma rays will then have a higher energy. So the next thing we're going to dive into is our formula. And so we have the wave equation where C is equal to lambda. And we're not going to change this from lambda F to lambda nu. So don't use this, use this. So the three parts to it is C is the speed of light, like we mentioned on the front side. And the thing that's nice about this is this is a constant. It's always going to be that 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second is how fast any form of energy will pass through a vacuum of space. Typically, we want wavelength to work with this constant. Wavelength needs to be in meters. So sometimes conversions are necessary. And then we have frequency or uh, new. And for frequency, we want it in hertz, which a hertz stands for one per second. And so that's why we get meters per second when we work with this equation and where we get the speed of light in meters per second. So we have three problems we're going to take a look at. So this first one, it says microwaves are used to cook food um, and transmit information. What is the wavelength? So that's what it's asking for. And it tells us that it has a frequency of 3.44 times 10 to the ninth hertz. So what I like to do, again, it's been a while since we've had an actual formula, is like I like to pull out the information. So wavelength is my question mark, what I'm solving for. My frequency is that 3.44 times 10 to the ninth hertz. And the last thing that will never be given to us is the constant for speed of light, and that is the 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meter per second. So we're solving using this base equation, C is equal to lambda nu, or wavelength times frequency. We need to get lambda on its own, so that's going to involve using division, and we're going to move frequency, and we get lambda is equal to C over our frequency. So that's our final equation. We can then substitute in. We have our speed of light constant. And then we have our frequency of 
times 10 to the ninth hertz. So the big thing to remember here when we go to come up with our unit is, let's see here, let me change my writing color, is that a hertz stands for one over a second. So this is like saying one over a second here. So what's gonna happen is seconds cancels with hertz. A hertz will cancel with that per second. And so what that leaves you with is the meter, which should make sense since we're finding wave length. Both of these, we look at this base part here for our sig figs. This has three sig figs, this has three sig figs, therefore we can keep three sig figs. We go with our fewest. So when I divided this out, I get an answer of 0 0.0872 meters, and that is the wavelength. The last thing I'm going to take a second to do is look at your handout and figure out what type of energy we're working with. And I know it talks about microwaves here, but if you look at that electromagnetic spectrum that I left you with or provided on Classroom, is that you can look here and always use the wave uh, or frequency. The wavelength gets kind of confusing because you're working through different units here. So what it has is it has that whole spectrum, but it's doing shortest wavelength to longest from gamma to radio. So it told us in the problem that it was 10 to the ninth hertz. So if you find 10 to the ninth hertz here, it tells you that you are working with microwaves. The, ver the forms that we're talking about are going across the top here. Okay, so moving on to the next problem then, we have, let's see here, there we go. And I have to change my display real quick is letter B. So we have x-rays can penetrate body tissues that are widely used to diagnose and treat disorders of um, internal body structures. And then it tells us what is the frequency of an x-ray with a wavelength of 1.15 times 10 to the 10th meters. So we're solving for frequency and we're given wavelength. So my lambda I know frequency I do not know, and I do know my speed of light or my speed of these x-rays here. So in my problem, I still have my base equation. Oops, let me get rid of that. Change that back to a writing. Okay, so we have C is equal to lambda nu. And so what we can do is we need to get wavelength then move to the other side. So in both cases, you're gonna end up using division. So we can substitute into our final equation here, C being our three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We can go ahead and then plug in our wavelength. The one thing you do wanna make sure is that you're always gonna have this in meters. So you wanna do a unit check and they're both in meters. So we don't need to rely on a conversion here. So meters cancels and we're left with per second or one over a second, which is a Hertz. So when we divide both of my givens here have three sig figs. So my final answer to three significant figures, once I do my division should be 0 0.0261. I'm gonna label this then as Hertz. If you want to, you could also use one over second or S to the negative one. I would prefer to use hertz for frequency to make that relationship stick. One last problem then, if you want to take a second and see if you can figure it out on your own, that's great. If you want to work this one out with me, you can do that as well. This one does have one last little kind of thing to work on. We're finding frequency like we did in um, the previous problem, and it gives us a wavelength of 435 nanometers. So I know my wavelength is 435 nanometers, and we know that the speed of light is the three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and we're finding frequency. Like I mentioned, you always need to make sure that these are in um, agreement. And we were given nanometers here, so that means these are not in agreement, and we need to make that happen. So we need to do a conversion, and it's been a little while since we've done those. 
So our given here is 435 nanometers and we need to change it to meters. If you remember, dividing by the unit you have is what's going to be necessary to make it cancel. And then we can find a conversion factor that relates the two. If you look through your Holy Grail sheet, this is a metric conversion, therefore it's at the um, top portion of your table. But the relationship here is that one meter is one times 10 to the ninth nanometers, meaning we're gonna do division. So when we divide these out, we get an answer of 4.35 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. I now have unit agreement, I can now set it up. Like the formula from above, when we find frequency, we're going to take our um, speed of light divided by our wavelength. So taking our constant with three significant figures divided by our new wavelength in meters. Three sig figs as well, so we can keep three in our final answer. Once we do that division, then we have... We need to add that zero in to make it count. So it becomes 6.90 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So from there, if I asked you to identify what this is, you could go to your handout and do that. So if we go to that handout provided to you, let's see here. There we go, is start with your frequency. So the frequency in this problem was 6.90 times 10 to the 14th. So when you find 10 to the 14th, that's right here on the handout. That means that we are working with a wave that is infrared. If it tells you, if for example, it fell in this range here, and you go into this part of it, you would need to use your nanometer side of it to figure out what the um, identity is based on what you are given. And so again, based on our answer here, it is going to be infrared. So that's it for this particular lesson. Um, the remainder of the assignment for today is to complete the homework with the problems part of the homework. Please make sure that you're showing a formula, work with units, and answer with units and sig figs. Reach out to me if you have any questions, concerns.